Dr. Hans Berger Childhood and Early Life Dr. Hans Berger was born on May 21, 1873 in the small Bavarian town of Neusses, which is located in Saxe Coburg and Gotha in Germany. He was the son of Dr. Paul Frederick Berger, a physician and of Mrs. Anna Ruckert, daughter of a German poet, who was well known for his studies in Oriental philosophy. In his life and work, Dr. Hans Berger combined both sides of this intellectual inheritance, determining early on to become a scientist philosopher. His childhood appeared to be quiet and happy. When he graduated, at 18 years of age, he moved to Berlin to pursue a career in mathematics, aiming to become an astronomer. He was used to the traditional quiet life of Coburg, and it seems that his adaptation to the vibrant Berlin of the end of the 19th century was not easy for the young Berger. After a year in Berlin, he decided to join the army for a one-year military service in artillery. It was in 1892, during this period, when an event occurred that completely changed his life. Dr. Hans Berger's Professional Life Dr. Hans Berger graduated from the gymnasium at Coburg and then entered the University of Jena in 1892. After one semester in astronomy, he transferred to medicine. After obtaining his medical degree from Jena in 1897, Berger joined the staff of Dr. Otto Ludwig Binswenger, who held the chair in psychiatry and neurology at the Jena Clinic. Habilitated in 1901, he qualified as a senior university lecturer in 1906 and physician-in-chief in 1912, eventually succeeding Dr. Binswenger in 1919. He also collaborated with two famous scientists and physicians, Dr. Oscar Vogt and Dr. Corbinian Brodman in their research on lateralization of brain function. Later served as an army psychiatrist on the Western Front during World War I in a military hospital in Rathal. He was elected rector of Jena University in 1927. In 1938, at the retirement age of 65, Berger was made Professor Emeritus in Psychology. He retired in 1938. His associates described Berger as a punctual, strict, demanding and a reserved person. Supernatural activity shaping Dr. Hans Berger's life. In the spring of 1893, just before his 20th birthday, Hans Berger was serving his duty as a volunteer in the German army. One morning, he was participating in training maneuvers when his horse stumbled and lost balance. Both he and his horse were thrown down and inclined to fall beneath the rumbling wheels of a large artillery and it was drawn by six dray horses. It was a large cannon piece, a large cannon, 
which was in those days were driven by horses so it was a very large huge and very heavy artillery piece and it was drawn by six large dray horses burger later acknowledged that he knew that was to be the moment of his death by whatever fateful circumstance young burger barely escaped being crushed beneath the huge heavy wheels though he received some minor injuries he had just escaped a certain death on that evening he received a telegram from his father inquiring about his well-being the inquiry was the result of an agitated concern expressed by his older sister who told their parents that she knew with a certainty that hans had suffered an accident his sister in that letter detailed a recent dream in which her brother broke his leg falling from a horse his sister was worried for her brother's safety as she loved her brother very very much she was so insistent that she caused her father to send the telegram she was very worried she really loved her brother whose name was hansberger hansberger was very lucky actually to have a sister like her not everyone gets that only the lucky ones have it burger got obsessed with this incident which he interpreted as a mental connection as a telepathic connection between him and his sister and years later he would write in his diary this was a case of spontaneous telepathy in which at a time of mortal danger as i contemplated certain death i transmitted my thoughts while my sister who was particularly close to me acted as the receiver on completion of his military service he resumed his studies at jena university switching to medicine as a starting point of brain understanding focusing his career afterwards in psychiatry and neurology over 40 years later burger still had no doubt that this event represented a true telepathic experience this was a moment a defining moment in dr hansberger's life dr hansberger the father of electroencephalogram dr hansberger returned to germany on the brink of revolution after serving on the western front during the first world war in a military hospital in rathel he was then appointed the new director of the psychiatric clinic at jena during the following years due to his administrative duties he got only a few hours as his personal time undeterred he utilized his limited time for his research as his colleagues said his day was strictly defined by the clock of duty as his colleague dr rafael jinsberg said his days resembled one another like two drops of water due to war there were large number of patients at the clinic with skull defects who were then made excellent subjects for his brain research he employed rather crude instruments such as the lipmans capillary electrometer and edelmans string galvanometer which were at that time used to record electrocardiograms In 1924 after an electrical stimulation session Dr Berger decided to switch the electrodes 
from the electrical stimulator to a modified galvanometer that is a string galvanometer generally used to measure electrocardiogram recordings and there was his first hint of success when continuous oscillations appeared in the galvanometer later on he switched to a double coil siemens recording galvanometer which allowed him to record electrical voltages as small as one tenth thousandth of a volt the resulting output up to three seconds in duration was then photographed by an assistant on 6th of july 1924 he observed small movements on the galvanometer on his young patient whose name was Zedel and hence recorded his first successful record of brain wave activity. In the same year of 1924, Dr. Hans Berger coined the term Electrum Kifelokran. The measured result was blurred and noisy and for many people meaningless but it was the starting point of electroencephalography. After this success, Dr. Hans Berger improved his method trying different electrodes and galvanometers, obtaining finally what he had been seeking for years, measuring the electricity generated by the brain. And finally, he measured the electrical potentials of a human brain. Dr. Hans Berger was filled with doubts, but undeterred and with deep faith in himself, continued his experiments for five more years before publishing his results, using not only patients with skull imperfections or trepanations, but also patients of intact skulls. With this later group, that is the patient with intact skulls, he placed one electrode at the front and another electrode at the back of their skulls. Berger kept refining his process and by 1929, he was regularly producing legible electroencephalograms. He kept experimenting with silver foil electrodes that went on subjects scalp or chlorided silver needles that went into subject skulls. He performed 73 scalp electroencephalograms on his son Klaus, whose hair was cut short. He also did electroencephalograms on his daughter Ilsa. He took 56 electroencephalograms from himself too, often using the needles. Throughout all this, his colleagues were still skeptical of his work. Those faint traces of electrical activity in the brain just didn't seem like they could be real. As one of his colleagues, Dr. Raphael Ginsberg, said that he let nobody into the secret of his investigation. What he achieved he achieved by his individual effort. In 1929, Dr. Hans Berger published his results in the highly reputed and esteemed journal Archive for Psychiatria und Nervenkrankheiten. His original article on electroencephalogram was titled as Uber das Elektrenkephalogram des Menschen. His first original article on electroencephalogram concluded that the regular electric current oscillations can be recorded from the skull of humans, but also that these oscillations are not due to blood flow. Electrical properties of the skin or any of the several other possibilities. 
he published a total of 14 such articles on different prospects of electroencephalogram or EEG from 1929 to 1938. But Dr. Hansberger did not get any positive feedback from his colleagues. They taught him to be a crank. But everything that happens, happens for a reason. And ultimately, his hard work paid off. He got his well-deserved appreciation and attention in 1934, when other esteemed researchers such as Dr. Edgar Douglas Adrian and Dr. B. C. H. Matthews, both of whom were reputed electrophysiologists of that era, finally drew attention to what Dr. Hansberger himself long knew as a certainty that the electrical activity of the brain could be measured. After British electrophysiologists Dr. Edgar Douglas Adrian and Dr. B. H. C. Matthews confirmed Berger's basic observations in 1934, the importance of his discoveries in electroencephalography were finally recognized at an international forum in 1937. By 1938, electroencephalography had gained widespread recognition by eminent researchers in the field leading to its practical use in diagnosis in the United States of America, England and France. Dr. Hans Berger, the father of electroencephalogram. Thus, Dr. Hans Berger finally saw the light of the day. His popularity in the medical world now knew no bounds. All those relenting years of research and having faith in himself finally paid off. He was now an international star. Dr. Hans Berger was now the father of electroencephalogram. Using the electroencephalogram, he was also the first to describe the different waves or rhythms which were present in the normal and abnormal human brain, such as the alpha wave rhythm, also known as Berger's wave, and its suppression that is substitution by the faster beta waves when the subject opened the eyes, also called as alpha blocket. He also studied and described for the first time the nature of electroencephalographic alterations in brain diseases such as epilepsy. He was also involved in other researches in different forms. Dr. Hans Berger was the discoverer of electroencephalogram or EEG of a human being. But at the back of his mind was always the search for the secret of man's psychophysical nature of the connection between the brain and the psyche. He wanted to know about this telepathic way of connectivity between him and his older sister. It was, it was this telepathic connection that ignited his thirst in neurophysiology. Thus, his interest in the electroencephalogram was towards that end, that is towards finding a telepathic connection and not in the use of it as a diagnostic tool for which electroencephalogram has become known. Dr. Hans Berger's personal life. Berger married his technical assistant, Baroness Ursula von Bullo, in 1911. He led a relatively happy domestic life. The couple had four children. 
one son whose name was Klaus and three daughters namely Ruth, Ilsa and Rosemary. His son Klaus and his daughter Ilsa also became subjects in during his research on brain waves. Dr. Hans Berger continued his studies on the electroencephalogram with all his efforts along with simultaneously handling his administrative duties. He was an internationally acclaimed person, but despite his international recognition, he was largely ignored in Germany. He was ignored in his own home country of Germany. Part of this reason for this was his antipathy for the Nazis and their distrust of him. In 1937, Dr. Hans Berger was invited to preside with Dr. Edgar Douglas Adrian at the Symposium on Electrical Activity in the Nervous System at the Congress of Psychology in Paris. They hailed Berger as the most distinguished of all the visitors. He was gaining international prestigious reputation, yet he faced humiliation in his home country, Germany. Some researchers documented that he was ordered by the Nazi authorities in 1938 to fire all Jewish employees at his laboratory, but he refused and he was forced to retire. Dr. Hans Berger was suggested to receive the Nobel Prize after discovering the electroencephalogram or EEG, but the Nazis didn't allow him to go to Stockholm and to receive the Nobel Prize. He also had to give up his work at the psychiatric clinic of Friedrich Schiller Universität Jena or University of Jena. Dr. Berger was forced to retire with a one-day notice on the same day as documented by many researchers. The Hans Berger Enigma With Adolf Hitler's rising in 1934 and World War II, Dr. Hans Berger's story started being contradictory. Different researchers say differently regarding his relationship with Nazi regime. In 1938, at the retirement age of 65, Dr. Hans Berger was made Professor Emeritus in Psychology. According to biographers, neither Mayer and Lopez da Silva, the appointment occurred in an unceremonious manner as his relationship with the Nazi regime was particularly strained. Numerous sources report that given their hostile relationship with the Nazis, the Nazis forced Dr. Hans Berger into retirement that same year with a complete ban of any further work on electro and kephalogram. It was 1938. These biographical accounts but were contradicted in 2005 by Ernst Klee, the German journalist specializing in the exposure and documentation of Nazi medical crimes. In 2005, Dr. Susan Zimmerman, medical historian at the University of Jena claimed to have found evidence that Dr. Hans Berger had not been forced into retirement but had served on the selection committee for his successor who was sacked as a Nazi after the war. Moreover, official records at the University of Jena dating from the 1930s said that Berger had served on the Arbgesundheitsrecht, that is, Court for Genetic Health, that is, 
that imposed sterilizations while his diaries contained anti-Semitic comments. These above claims regarding Dr. Hans Berger to be a Nazi loyalist, though are there, but still need strong evidences to have a solid footing, to have a strong footing. These claims are therefore can be disputed. Dr. Hansberger did not join the SS, SA or Nazi party. Despite the significant Nazification of the University of Jena, but was a supporting SS member, possibly for self protection. His laboratory was dismantled, and he then moved to the small town of Bad Blackenburg, Saalfeld, Rudolstadt, Thuringia, in the German Empire to live out his days. He could no longer pursue his researches. He was suffering from long-term depression along with chronic cardiac ailments and a severe skin disease. Dr. Hans Berger thus committed suicide by hanging on June 1, 1941 in the southern wing of the clinic. This is a picture of Hans Berger clinic. This is same picture of the uh, same clinic, uh, having uh, by giving a more wider look of the clinic. The final resting place of Dr. Hans Berger, along with his wife, Mrs. Ursula Berger, and son, Dr. Klaus Berger, which is located near Brusk in the Dorothinstadt Cemetery in East Berlin, Germany. Rest in peace, respected madam and sir. If one does not consider his political implications, which are still not clear, then it's crystal clear that this world owes to Dr. Hans Berger for his relentless research on brain waves and his discovery of electroencephalogram which opened new horizons in neurophysiological science and has helped millions of people and will continue to help in the future. Thank you, sir. Research Among his many research interests in uh, neurology, Dr. Hans Berger studied brain circulation, psychophysiology, and brain temperature. However, his main contribution to medicine and neurology was the systematic study of the electrical activity of human brain and the development of electroencephalography. Following the pioneering work done by Richard Catton in England with animals, in 1924, Dr. Hans Berger made the first EEG recording of human brain activity and called it electron kephalogram. Hans Berger Prize Hans Berger Prize is awarded triennially by the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Kliniske, that is German Society of Clinical Neurophysiology for long-standing and extensive academic work in theoretical or clinical neurophysiology. The story of Dr. Hans Berger is the story of a man who pursued his goals with an obsessive single-minded persistence for more than 40 years, who finally achieved success only to have circumstance and world events remove him from position of influence and recognition that he so richly deserved.
it's not just a story that ends tragically with his suicide at the age of 68 but it's also a story unlike any it's a saga a saga of great undeterred determination and strength of will of a visionary of a person who like a true warrior hero overcame all the challenges and envisioned the world in a way better than most of us can ever understand dr hansberger born on may 21st 1873 in newses which is located in saxe coburg and gotha in germany died on june 1st 1941 in jena in german empire he was 68 years old at the time of his death we see in the electroencephalogram a concomitant phenomenon of the continuous nerve processes which take place in the brain exactly as the electrocardiogram represents a concomitant phenomenon of the contractions of the individual segments of the heart these famous lines were said by dr hansberg the first human eeg recording obtained by hans berger in 1924 this is a picture i got it from wikipedia his signature thank you dr hans berger thank you sir for everything this is himachu shekhar gogoi Thanks and namaskar and you are watching namaskar physiology so at this time of covid 19 we uh, we should all like follow the rules and we should be staying in our homes so be safe be uh, be in your homes stay blessed and last but not the least be hopeful thanks thank you all